So you've just been sent out in the field to remove and replace a Cisco device. Do you know how? Stick around to learn. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to more of the Cisco CCT. That's right. We're going to be talking about removing and replacing a Cisco device. Now, Ronnie, cruel uh, punishment here. When you said join me for R&R, &R, that's not what I was thinking. Yeah, I hate to say it. I probably don't use the correct technical term for this. I come from a mechanics background. Sure. So I always think about R&R, &R, which is remove and replace. That's sure, gotcha. About. So when it, when it comes down to it, Wes, one of the things that we really have to ensure that we do is remove and replace something, especially when it's broken. But there's issues behind doing that, especially with networking equipment. Okay. So Wes, let's say in our network closet that we have, you've seen all the equipment that's in there. Okay. Sure. What do you think would happen if we just removed like one of the routers during the middle of the business day and uh, we didn't think anything about it? I'd have to make sure that the printer is working so I could replace it with my resume or print out my resume. Yeah, that's one of those things where if you take down the entire network, sure, which can end up happening. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, Not a good day at the office. Could be that resume generating event yes, that everybody sir. <laughs> uh, doesn't ever want to have happen. That's right. But overall, though, yeah, it's one of these considerations that we have to think about. Mm -hmm. So even if a device is functioning but it's not functioning well. You still have to take time to plan out when you can do it, okay, and whatever the earliest convenience is. And you have to pick the right time to do it as well, okay? So that's why it actually requires a little bit more planning than just saying, I'll just yank it out and then we'll just put it back in place. Now, if you're super fast, okay, you might be able to do it before anybody notices, but I guarantee you, you're probably not that fast, uh, you know, right now to actually be able to do that. Heck, I don't know anybody that's that fast to be able to do that. <laughs> so even in off hours, right, where maybe people aren't in the building, you probably have something like some kind of backup system running on your servers or something. You could take that offline right. too. Right. Yeah, it's, not, it's possible, right? Sure. So the very fact is, in other words, until you find out like what is going through that particular device, mm -hmm. okay, uh, what may be happening, you want to make sure that you have a way that you're actually saying, okay, we're rerouting this stuff over here while we're doing this. We're actually ensuring that everything can, can go on or we're actually going to schedule downtime. Okay. is what we actually have to make sure that we do. So all that has to be re relayed correctly to the people that we're actually providing that service for, that if there is a, you know, if there is downtime that is required, that you schedule that and that you actually go ahead and make sure that you tell them that as well. Now, Wes, sometimes it's not just because something is broken, okay? But let's say that we no longer have, you know, the switch that we have is not functioning sufficiently for our new network as it's coming up, or even for a network that's been in place but now has a lot more, uh, you know, uh, traffic going across it. Sure. So maybe we've gone from the, you know, the days where we maybe only needed uh, to support gigabit Ethernet, but now maybe we need like 10 G. You know, yeah. we need 10 gig Ethernet. We're going to have to do some kind of upgrade. Right. So sometimes it is the upgrade here, and mm -hmm. a lot of places might actually just replace it on an annual schedule. Okay. So it might be that where you have to do something like that. So Wes, let's take for an example, we might have actually replaced, we're actually going to replace this switch right okay, here. Sure. Okay, sure. Now, for us though, if that switch is actually in a rack, we normally have rack eaters attached to it, which okay. means you have to actually be careful because it is the size of a regular pizza box. Let's okay. put it that way, right? But in terms of weight compared to a pizza, it's it, pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy, yeah. Okay? So that means you have to be able to support that thing as it comes out of the rack as well, but you have to unscrew all those screws that are actually holding it in the rack. Mm -hmm. But even before all that, you have to kind of remove the cables that are attached to the front of this thing, possibly even the back of this thing, and make sure that everything is actually kind of good. And Ronnie, um, space to do that. Let me ask you this: Do these follow uh, normal like uh, rack unit sizes? Is this would, yep. would this be like a one use server here if we had, exactly. or any other device that would be in our rack? Right. So okay. most networking equipment tends to follow in that particular same okay. idea okay. is that there'll be certain standardized sizes. Okay. To help us out. But yes, this is a one use uh, type of rack. Here, okay. Uh, amount that we'd have. Now, once we have that out, right, that means we also have to replace it with something else too. Now, okay. it doesn't mean that you should then decide on what to replace it with. It means you should already have that in hand and ready for that particular device to go. Now, Wes, let's talk about some of the limitations on this okay. device that we're talking about here. Now, one of the ones that we've been mentioning, that I've mentioned at least a couple of times now and about mentioning a third time, is that backplane. Okay. okay? So remember those yellow ports that we were talking about, you know, the, the yellow ports that we're actually seeing right here, okay? Well, remember that each one of those yellow borders that we see, like in this grouping right here, mm -hmm. that is sharing that one gig backplane. So all- All shared uh, bandwidth. Uh, all 16 of that is sharing that one gig backplane. Okay, okay? so each one's getting a slice, of it, a slice of the pie, if you will. Yep, slice of the pie, okay? okay. Not exactly bad, 
you know, but if you get all 48 ports going, it can't be, it's not super bad, but at the same time, it, it may not give you the performance that you need. Okay. Okay. So Wes, that may actually be a consideration where we go, can we get something a little bit better than this? So that is a possibility. The other thing, let's go ahead and let's turn this around so sure. that we can also see this as well. Now, let's say, Wes, we are in Florida, okay, mm -hmm. which means that power outages tend to happen too. Yeah, quite literally. And what we've also started seeing, of course, is that with this particular one, there's not really anything that we can remove or anything else. Yeah. If I can't add in additional power, no. this has one power supply to it. Yep. Just one plug. Okay. So in that sense, that means if the power goes out and this is not connected to a UPS, this one's going to go offline. This one's going to go offline. Okay, sure. Okay? So this may actually become that hindrance. Now, there's also something else. Let's say that we hear a fan rattling in here. All right. Okay. If I hear a fan rattling in here and I open it up and there's one fan, that's pretty hefty because that means if that fan gives out, the inside of this is going to feel like a toaster oven. Sure, it doesn't sound like it's a field replaceable unit either. Yeah, unless not, you've got yeah. one already in the in your spare parts yeah. closet. <laughs> right. So let's say that those are limitations. Okay, okay sure. That, that we go, look, it's time for us to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Wes, let's go ahead and bring up our replacement switch. Okay, so absolutely. We can take a look here, and then we'll talk about why this is different. All right, Wes, uh, as we actually stack this up, I, I'm noticing Ronnie, something, Ronnie. Go ahead and put your hand in there, and you'll. Look at that. Your switch is missing something yeah, here. It's, it's missing, uh, missing a little bit of hardware. Things, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a cubby hole. I got yeah, it. Yeah, it's a cubby hole. Okay. <laughs> now, Wes, the reason why this is actually going to be a switch we're going to replace this with okay. is because there's a couple of different things. Okay. Remember that fan thing that we were talking sure. about? Sure. Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, we can have, well, dual. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make sure I'm turning them the right way. We can actually have dual fans. Oh, and these are like hot swap fans. Yes. These are modular. Okay. okay? So that, that way, if one breaks, we can actually send off for another one and just plug it right in. I even like while that. The that sounds good. On. Okay. Okay. Now, the other thing we don't have yet, but hopefully it's on order, power supplies. Okay. Modular power supplies as well. Really? So if we use this. We slide it into one of those slots. Okay. okay. And we actually have another one that comes in, and we put that one in there as well. Now, if one fails, the other one can take over. Interesting. And you so, could even go even farther than that. I mean, too. I mean, if you've got two of those power supplies, could you hook each one of those power supplies to its own circuit? And then if the circuit fails, now you get even more redundancy because the other power supply is still online. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, so there's a lot of this that's going on here. Now, there's some additional technology that's marked on the back of this, okay. uh, as you actually see there. There's two different technologies that help us that's really going to be key, especially if we get all the right and, and uh, the, the same configurations, right, that, to make it all work here. Okay. Now, one is the stack wise that we had talked about previously. Okay, connecting yep. more than one switch together. Yep. Gotcha. And if we actually line these things up, we actually do see that there's stack wise ports. Even sure enough. Both of them, yep. So that you actually see that we can connect those together if we want to. It means even if one fails, the other one can still take over and still manage this switch if it needs to. Very good. Okay. Now, normally we'd actually do this with more than two, but mm -hmm. just kind of realize that that is possible. The other thing that we have, and it actually looks like a little rainbow symbol somewhere around there, okay, uh, that we see, it's called stack power. And that's doing exactly what we have, is that we can even distribute the load of the power if for one reason, even our power supplies on one of those actually ends up fail. Really? The other one can actually still feed additional power back. Interesting. So it gives us that ability to be able to do stuff. Well, that sounds like a good upgrade. Yeah, definitely. It seems like you're getting a little bit closer to that higher availability that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, so all these things are actually good things for us to actually think about when we start replacing it. And more than likely, you know, if at all possible, right, the very fact is you probably didn't just buy one of these. Okay, In all reality, you probably bought a couple of these, mm -hmm. if not even like five or six, like we bought eight. Okay. We actually ended up buying. And we have cables that allow us to connect all those together and do everything else that we need them to. And we also provided for that redundancy, too. For us on this one, we still have one power supply that's, I think, supposed to be coming. Mm -hmm. We just haven't got it in the mail yet. Now, the ones that we're doing, though, here, this is used equipment, okay? You might wonder, like, why used equipment? Because new equipment is <laughs> super expensive. But at the same time, if you're actually running an older shop, it could be that your used equipment is the way to go. Now, even with used equipment, you want to make sure that you're very careful about this because you may actually end up getting it and you receive it damaged. So always do a power test when you do get new equipment to replace it. So that means before you 
rack it all up, Wes, before you plug the power into it, before you put all 48 ports back in and get it to work, it'd be a shame, Wes, if the last thing that you did is you plug that power in and nothing <laughs> did Nothing on. happened. So, yeah. <laughs> so this is a really, uh, this, it's a real world example mm -hmm. in a previous episode where you had me consult into this. We powered it up. It's not in the server closet yet. I mean, as a field technician, you would be doing exactly that. Maybe right. at a dedicated desk, just to whatever yeah. your work. Just okay. to test it out and okay, verify sure. everything. Sure. So Wes, let's go ahead and do this here. All right. right? Uh, I'm going to get you to put this in. And there's two, uh, there's two slots, actually, uh, to be able to actually place that in there. And you'll see that once we do it, it locks in place. And Wes, right. how easy is it to remove? Man, that was toolless. Yeah. So go ahead yeah. and remove that as well, and you'll see that it doesn't require any additional tools. Wow, that was really easy. Like, the clip didn't give me a hard time at all. That yep. is really neat. That's yeah, really so neat. something like that. And Wes, you can actually see, I'm not even telling Wes, like, he's never actually put one of these in before. No, no, this is the first time. Let me see here. Yep, that's uh, the right way to go. And it just slides in. Okay. And he'll oh, see there, it clicks and right it in there. Clicks okay. just like a drive uh, going into a drive bay. Exactly. Yeah, that's really that's really neat. And they also have lights on them. Okay. And actually tells us like if it's green, everything is good. Okay. If it's red, something's bad. wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this gives us that ability. And I have run into bad fans before. Okay. So if you do end up buying one of these like from eBay, check out what the uh, the uh, seller what their replacement policy is before okay. you go buy. Sure. If it says buyer beware, which I don't think they use that term anymore. No, but okay. They say no exchanges, Got 50 of them in a no box returns. sitting out in the shed. Yeah, they might not work too well. Yeah, so, okay. so, you know, in other words, pay attention to your buyer if you're actually going to buy something like okay. this. If they tell you, no, we'll replace it. We'll do that. Just contact us and we're ready to go, you know, deal with somebody that's going to be reputable to you. And we've okay. actually dealt with this guy for a couple of years now. Sure. So we know that everything is, is good. And that makes sense because if it's such a mission critical type device, I mean, we're not talking a home router here where I can just replace it off of Amazon right. just like that by going up online. I mean, I guess you can if you can throw money at the mm -hmm. uh, solution. But I mean, if you're just like you've mentioned a small business here and you're relying on this, this could be the difference between being in business and well, not. Yeah. Now, the other thing is let's go ahead and take that power supply okay. on and we'll turn this one around. Wes is stronger than I am. That's why I'm getting him to do all the work uh, here for now. Wes, over by you, there's actually that little module right here. Now, that particular module, I've yeah, we've kind of loosened it there. We're not going to pull it out for right okay. now, but what does that give me to do? Okay, Wes, that is a one gig SFP module. It has okay. four different SFP ports on it. Okay. It's actually equivalent to like the one that's underneath it uh, to a point. Okay. Now you might be like, well, what's the big deal about that? Why do we care? Well, because it doesn't have to be there. That's an extra added bonus to this particular switch here that you can add in. Now, why does that matter? Because it means I can remove that, and if we wanted to go to 10 gig. Just plug it another yep, ASIC in you'd there. You'd actually buy that, that particular yeah, module that you'd actually do, okay. and you'd put a 10 gig one in there. Interesting. Okay? And that allows you to go ahead and do the upgrades. Whatever the, you know, it's again going to be limited to what that model will actually end up doing, but you can actually upgrade some of this. And so the modularity... The ease of it actually allows you to do that. Now, on that one, though, I think you do have to power down the switch before you can do that. Okay. But on these and the power supply, if one of them is still working on the power supply, you can actually just pull the other one out, the broken one, put a new one back in, and that's ready to go. Same thing with these fans. That's like a night and day difference between the serviceability of the one that we've been seeing here on the bottom and the one on top. It's just the ability to do that on the fly when you need to, rather than bringing the whole switch offline, opening it up to, well, I guess yeah, take you it out of the rack it yeah, yeah. and open it up, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much just about it. Okay. So, Wes, in terms of replacing an upgrade, right, once we get everything up and ready to go, okay, we still have to verify and do a little bit more configuration on the switch before we plug it into the rack. Okay. But overall, though, we want to make sure, of course, that it physically works. Okay. Right? Instead of plugging it in and go, okay, oh, it doesn't work. Okay? <laughs> that's a yep. bad day because sure. that's a lot of double work to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. But make sure it actually works. And then when we plug it in, we want to verify that everything is actually what we expect it to be, including that the iOS is there that okay. we're expecting to see. If it's not, there may not be much you can do about it unless you already have a, a Cisco contract that you can then pull a newer copy of the iOS down to put on it. They don't even recommend that you do that because it's old equipment. Okay. But at the same time, you can get them if you actually you know, have one of those contracts to be able to do so. All right, Wes, so that gives us kind of a flavor of what might have to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, you're probably looking for parity the majority of the time. In other words, it actually is, we're just trying to get it to work again, and we really don't want to change a lot. But if you are going for upgrades, make sure you do know what you're actually taking a look at and that you do understand some of the repercussions of you not scheduling some of this stuff out as you actually have to do this. 
the West. I think that's a kind of good, uh, you know, look at the idea of comparing them and actually understanding what we're getting into. Most definitely. The difference between re removing and replacing the entire switch versus remo removing and replacing potentially just a modular component, you can definitely see where that comes in handy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be all for this episode, but stay tuned because we got more exciting content coming up in the Cisco CCT. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.